clinical trials. Yeah. Just in clinical That's trials. That's right. That's right. Now, wasn't there a Lyme disease vaccine, but the problem was it was actually causing people to get Lyme disease? So that's a – to talk about controversial topics. So yes. that um, So there was a Lyme disease vaccine that was developed – uh, actually, from a colleague of mine uh, at Yale University, and then it was, and they licensed it. I think it was to GlaxoSmithKline, and they developed it as a, they called it Limerix. It was uh, the Lyme disease vaccine, and actually, most of the studies suggest that it actually worked pretty well. Uh, the problem was there were a number of people who felt that the vaccine made them worse or they said they had chronic Lyme disease, that it wasn't effective. So it was really a market perception problem more than anything else. And ultimately, uh, it hurt the bottom line of the company and they they withdrew it from well, the market. A good friend of mine's dad got the vaccine and then got Lyme disease. They think he got Lyme disease from the vaccine. Probably not. Probably is a no. weird word for well, someone with Lyme disease. That's being nice. That no, got no, it from a vaccine. No, no, he didn't get Lyme disease. No from way. A vaccine. Impossible. No, impossible. Because Lyme disease is caused by the Lyme bacteria, the spirochete called Borrelia burgdorferi, mm -hmm. and the vaccine is not a live vaccine. It's a recombinant protein based vaccine, so it's not possible. So there's nothing in that vaccine that could have caused this adverse reaction that they directly attribute to that vaccine. Probably not. That's Pro what, again. You're saying probably. Well, I don't know the patient. Right. I don't. I haven't yeah. examined the interview, so I hate to. They swear. I mean, that's yeah. the narrative yeah. at that household. Well, again, you know? you know, it's reinforced by a lot of negative information out there on the internet. Yeah, that's, but that's, it's also reinforced by the fact they pulled the vaccine. Yeah. Well, they pulled the vaccine not because it wasn't working, but because of market perception and and all that sort of. And that was a time before the number of cases of Lyme disease have really taken off. So that seems strange to me because they didn't pull the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine because of per perception. Why would they pull the Lyme disease vaccine because of perception? I think the reason was is because um, the the cost benefit equation works a little differently. Um, with measles, measles is a killer disease. Mm -hmm. Lyme disease was not a killer disease. But and, God damn, and it's there, wrecking people now. In some it's, cases. It yeah. seems to be uh, connected to uh, a host of other ailments too, correct? Like Lyme disease, it just exacerbates a bunch of different, maybe possibly even existing health issues. Well, you have to be careful. You know, the the and this gets into another controversial rabbit hole I'm not sure we want to get into or not today, but, um, you know, the Infectious Disease Society of America, for instance, has come out with a strong statement saying that there's really no such thing as chronic Lyme disease. And um, the scientific evidence does not support something called chronic Lyme disease, yet there are lots of uh, people suffering with chronic debilitating illness who claim that it's caused by Lyme disease. So, yes. So this is something that... Um, is out there right now. Why is there a debate? Like, what is the, what? Why are they saying that it's, there is no such thing as chronic Lyme disease? What's their evidence? Um, the evidence is that there's no evidence that they can detect spirochetes in the body. In many cases, uh, uh, people who have had Lyme disease don't have persistent evidence of having uh, antibodies any longer to to the Lyme spirochete. So. Um, it's a whole different area. Right, but they do have this chronic inflammation and pain in their joints they have and their some, body starts breaking down. They have something, but it doesn't seem to be – the Infectious Disease Society of America, uh, which is one of the lead infectious disease bodies in our country, and I'm not an expert on Lyme disease, so I'm not too comfortable going there with you, are saying that there's no evidence that uh, – that that's just actually associated with active infection with Lyme disease. And what are they, how are they describing it? And what, how are they? So in other words, so what's causing all yes. of these symptoms? Unknown. 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 Hmm. But isn't it bizarre that these same people got Lyme disease first and then had all these host of issues afterwards? Well, the, I guess part of the problem is in some cases they had Lyme disease first. In some cases they really didn't have Lyme disease. Unfortunately, there are a number of phys, uh, unscrupulous healthcare providers and even physicians out there that are making the misdiagnosis. Either they're making a misdiagnosis of Lyme disease or in some cases they're actually – taking everyone who comes through the door and diagnosing them with Lyme disease. Mm. I'm sure you're aware of the Lone Star tick right. and the allergy to red meat. Yeah, right. That's really gal. fascinating, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 